Kate and I are so happy that you have agreed to officiate at our wedding. You and I have come a long way since the days when Father was pastor of Headingley Congregational Church, and we stood at his side. For you, I know, it was a huge step to convert to Catholicism. I much appreciate the pain and anguish you went through at Oxford before you took that step. I sometimes feel that my own conversion was too easy in comparison. Whereas you have chosen a life in the church, I have abandoned my earlier aspirations and sought a secular life here in New York, which, by her own declaration, is Kate's delight. Father, may I ask where you're going? You seem to be going a long way with that suitcase. Yes, I'm uh, off to New York. My younger brother is getting married there and he's asked me to conduct the service. He tells me it's going to be quite an occasion. Have you been to New York before? Uh, no, not New York, no. But my father once lived in America with my mother and two of my sisters. He was a minister in the first congregational church in Omaha, Nebraska. Congregational? Forgive me, Father. But you're a Roman Catholic priest. My father and I saw our purpose on this earth uh, slightly differently, but we, we both believed we were doing God's work in our own way. I see from the label on your luggage that you're travelling on one of the White Star Line ships, the SS Adriatic from Liverpool. Well, no, not quite. White Star Line, yes, but not from Liverpool. I was due to sail on the Adriatic later this month, but I had the great good fortune of being able to exchange my ticket for an earlier sailing on the SS Titanic. My name is Ellen Mocklair, and I was on the Titanic when it struck the iceberg. When the terrible crash came, we were thrown from our bunks. Outside, in the passageway, we saw Father Biles coming towards us with his hands uplifted as though in prayer. Be calm, my good people, he said. And then he went about the steerage giving absolution and blessings. My name is Bertha Moran. I'm also one of the survivors. When a few of us became very anxious, the priest started reciting the rosary and we all joined in. As we prayed, he led us to where the boats were being lowered. With no regard for himself, he helped the women and children to their seats, whispering words of comfort and encouragement. Agnes McCoy. One sailor warned Father Biles he was in terrible danger and begged to board his boat, but the priest refused. A little later, the same sailor again pleaded with him to save himself, but again Father Biles refused. I was in the last boat to leave, and as we were slowly going further away, we could hear Father Biles' voice in the responses to his prayer. They got fainter and fainter, until I could only hear the strains of Nearer My God to Thee, and the screams of the people left. The man rowing the boat told us we were mistaken about the screams, that it was the people singing, but we knew differently. Cross. Yeah. And this is a, a beautiful stained glass window, the round window. Gee, wow, so. that's beautiful. Yeah. So this is really, William, what you really wanted to come and see. All right. Oh, 
gee, yes. This was a stained glass window erected in memory of Father Thomas Biles. Gee, so it was. Yeah. Well, Granny and Grandpa never ever really got over the tragedy of losing Thomas. So Father Thomas was your grandfather's brother? Sure was, yep. And because at that time there was a belief that you should never postpone a wedding, the uh, service went ahead. They had a small private ceremony, just immediate family. And then uh, instead of the big reception that was planned, they went straight home. Grandma changed out of her white satin gown that she'd got from Paris. And then she and Grandpa put on black mourning clothes and went back to the church for a requiem mass. Very sad. What a terrible and tragic loss. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, a little while later, they came back to Europe and uh, had a private audience with the Pope. And he declared Father Thomas a martyr for the church. <laughs>